Emeka, welcome to the program. Hey, Jim. It's great to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of your work, man. It's, uh, I'm excited for this. Well, this you know is- what? Every now and then here on the Old Fart Show, I'd like to have a good-looking young man that's full <laughs> of you know, piss and vinegar who can just re-energize everything that we're doing here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you have been on my radar for quite some time, and, and you and I have had this conversation. We're going to talk about it on this show is, you know, you're a, you're a young guy, you're passionate, you're driven, you're hardworking, but you also believe in, in processes and mentorship and giving right. back. And so we're going to talk about all that. We're going to, of course, uh, what you've got going on uh, in the world of publishing, because that's what we primarily talk about on this show. But uh, with you, I'd like to cover uh, a number of bases, if that's okay with you. Let's do it. Let's All right, it. good. Hey, before we get started, give the audience a little background on you. Yeah, well, I'm from uh, Vancouver, Canada, and uh, you it's know, funny you, you look Canadian. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I got the, the flag over mm-hmm. here. I'm down here in Mexico uh, from Monterey. That's where my wife is. We met during the the Winter Olympic, Olympics in uh, in Vancouver in the most Canadian way. Our seats were side by side each other at a hockey game. For the Olympics. <laughs> That's so, cool. Yeah, and then when we had our first daughter in 2015, we moved down to Mexico just to be closer with her family and all that. Ended up staying down here. Had to find a job that was going to pay dollars, not pesos. Found this whole internet thing that mm. people were making money on, and I was like, "Wait, what? I thought the internet was like just for like downloads and like Facebook and and YouTube. Like, you can make money." Yeah. Here I am. You know, scary, huh? After I started and, um, you know, just had my best month ever last month and uh, teaching people how to do it and just, it's just love life, you know? Yeah, yeah just things are good, man. Things cool. Good. So what, what, uh, what part of Mexico are you in? Monterey. So okay. it's never the Mexico anybody ever thinks of. They're like, oh my God, you live in Mexico? Oh, cool. <laughs> you know your role, all right? Yeah. Yeah. I live in the desert. Big city, three million people here. But it's like, like... There's no, like, I'm a nine-hour drive to Puerto Vallarta. I'm a nice. hour and a half flight, two-hour flight to Cancun. So, do nice. you play more? Yeah, I, just, I just think it's funny that a black dude from Canada is now living in Mexico. Bro, man, it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. We have my, my neighbors, he's actually part Canadian as well. Is that right? They, they opened up a restaurant. It's a, it's a taco stand. And so uh, <laughs> you know, we, we were we were sitting there, we were having a Coronas, and we were just, we're like, look at us running a freaking taco stand in Mexico, and we're both from Burnaby, you know, near Vancouver. And I'm like, this is the most cliche thing in the world. Yeah, you know? that's, that's one of the, the really cool things now, though, and, and you have found this out and you're living this, is if, if you have skills... Uh, thanks to the the internets, as my mom says, no. uh, you can literally live and work from anywhere in the world that you that you have a connection. And yeah. uh, I think that's I think that's very cool. We were talking earlier about uh, Dave Chesson. You know, he started his very yeah. successful business when he was, gosh, on duty in in Korea, which right. is which is a couple of notches down from Monterey. So you should be. <laughs> okay. So, well, let's, let's kind of go back to it because so, so you moved down there, uh, you were looking for something to do. Did you immediately get started uh, with the, uh, the publishing, the online uh, books and that sort of thing? Or did you try a few things? No, I didn't get immediately get started. I fell into the, um, how did I first get online? You know, it was, it was actually a Gary, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk video. Mm. And uh, he talked about, I guess the official words of retail arbitrage. He's like, just go on to eBay and buy something and resell it on Amazon for a profit. Yeah. Cause Amazon's like the higher quality eBay. And I'm like, no, it can't be that easy. And I, I found three random products and would have made $120 just flipping them. I'm like, wait, what? And so I started looking into this, which is, I guess drop shipping would be mm-hmm. the, the term. Yeah. And um, so it was a little too difficult because being in Mexico, I, didn't have access to some of the stores and stuff like that. So then I looked at Amazon FBA, that kind of, I started going through the rabbit hole, right? Amazon mm-hmm. FBA. And I was all set for that, did all the research and getting into that. I was saving money at the time, but realized the more I researched, it was going to cost me a couple grand, not a couple hundred to get started. Yeah. Right. And then that's how I found publishing. And I was like, wait a minute, I can write a book for like, or get a book written for like, you know, 50 to a hundred bucks which I found was slightly dated at the time, that info. <laughs> but still, but still, mm-hmm. I had 300 bucks saved, and I was able to get a book published, and boom, 
just everything started changing then. And what what was that book about? Did you write that book or did you have it ghostwritten yeah, for you? I'm all about the the um, outsourcing the writing. I was I got into this to make to make money, not to share my story. I actually just finished a book like a couple weeks ago. I personally wrote myself. It's just um, just finalizing getting it printed and all that. So that'll be coming out soon. Awesome. But, um, that first book I did, it was on emotional habits. I thought it was the best thing in the world. Uh, it's my worst book ever. I think <laughs> it's horrible. I hate it. Uh, but you know what? It was the first piece of online real estate. If I could say, you know, that I'd ever published mm -hmm. um, that book didn't even, it hasn't even cracked a profit yet. My second book did, but the first book, you know, I paid a little too much for it and I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know how to market it properly. And, you know, but uh, th that book will always be the, the, the one that got me started. So, so well, that, and that's the important thing because I was talking to someone yesterday, they're making, gosh, they're, they're doing about 15 grand a month on uh, Kindle with their, with the sci-fi books. Nice. And we were talking about their first book and I'm like, what was your first book? And they were like, I'm not saying. I don't want anybody reading that crap because it was just, but they said the same thing. It was the book that, that finally got them to take action. And that's one thing that I want to talk to you about uh, in a few minutes is about taking action and getting moving. So, uh, so basically you were researching various ways to make a living online. You looked at, you know, the, you tasted the Amazon FBA Kool-Aid, yeah. uh, you know, that train went by. So then you started looking at the publishing. Um, who, who initially got you interested in doing the publishing? Was it a, a video that you watched yeah, or a it, book it was, or what? It was, it was Stephen James Palernos. Uh, I think it was by Stephen James. Yeah. And, uh, Project Life Mastery. And mm -hmm. what I, you know, for me, I was attracted to him because he seemed very genuine, but he was also from Vancouver. He was Canadian. So ah. was like, oh, that's cool. and Canadians stick together. And uh, so that was cool. So, you know, and I started watching his stuff and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And he did the FBA stuff. And, but then he also, the, the, pip, the, the publishing stuff as well. So I started mm -hmm. just like nonstop consuming like every, everything of his probably like what a lot of people do if they find my stuff or, or your stuff like that you start consuming as much as you can and um yeah and then you know ended up just kind of going down that route and, and meeting new people and sort of learning it myself and seeing what worked that what didn't work and boom yeah you know stefan was one of the original mentors if you will Totally. You know, Jason Brock was in there. There's a yeah. lot of guys there that really uh, impacted a lot of the young guys or even the old guys who wanted to get onto to Kindle. And, and, and let's talk about this a little bit because I think it's kind of a mind shift because I come from the old school of authors. I, I write books. You know, right. that's, what, that's what I do. But you don't have to be an author really to make money online selling books anymore, you can do the publishing side of things, which is what basically you started doing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the same, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Like I was just reading an article about Toys R Us um, going out of business because they were, can you believe that? Because they refused to adopt to the online world. Yeah. Wait, did, did you guys fall asleep when Blockbuster went under? Like, <laughs> How did, right? Like mm -hmm. that CEO should never get another job again. Yeah. Because you just made the same mistake Blockbuster made. And so that's the whole online thing I think has done that for the publishing world. Like I am, um, you know, I'm like, a, I got my small publishing house. You know, I just got a couple books that I really focus on that I've built more of a brand around. And I have a, I have a phenomenal writer. She's just incredible. And she's, I look at her as more a business partner because that's exactly what she is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so she writes the books and I publish them and I get feedback from her. And, and um, that's essentially, yeah, I'm like my own small little publishing business here. And um, she's got my, my brand of books that I really, really focus on. And a couple other niches that uh that i i uh still work with but i do have that core brand that's kind of like my bread and butter so to speak and you do non-fiction right yeah non-fiction yeah do you and i'm, I'm not going to ask you to reveal your pen names or anything like that because i don't want people just running over there copying you yeah. but what uh as far as the the genres of non-fiction are you doing self-help uh are you doing business books what can you just give me genres great 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 question 
that's what most people start with, right? They start mm-hmm. with self-help and, and health and fitness or cookbooks or mm-hmm. essential oils. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's, but no, like one of the things that I teach my students is don't do, don't do that. Yeah. Go completely outside the box because I believe most niches on Amazon are going to be profitable, but not all keywords are going to be profitable, but no, most niches are. Um, so find something completely obscure like fishing or fishing techniques, mm-hmm. something that you're not going to find on a bestseller. Yeah, something you can really niche down to. Totally, because yeah. that's where I found, like once I did that, my books blew up. I started figuring things out. And so that's what I always try to get my students to, to focus on first is just, you know, like find the thing that not everyone's going to be going after because that's where you're really going to start making your first couple dollars mm-hmm. and everything because you need experience in the beginning. Yeah. Right. And, and I think it's very important that you, you research the topic, which is what you're talking about. You know, so many people will jump out there and say, oh, you know, these, uh, these space opera books are selling really well, or the, the romance is selling really well. Well, hell, I'm just going to jump in there and, you know, get books created. And, but they don't do the research with the understanding that you, you need to niche down to find that audience. It's much better uh, to be a big fish in a little pond, I think, than a dinky fish in a big pond. You're you're absolutely right. And like space, what well, space? space There's opera. space opera, sci-fi, that sort of thing. Yeah. I could jump in with my knowledge on self-publishing. I've only been doing this like a year and a bit, but I could try to publish books in space opera. But mm-hmm. There's like the the chance that I'm probably going to fail. I'd say it's sixty percent failure rate. Yeah. I know nothing about the topic. I know nothing about the readers. I have mm-hmm. zero interest in that. I'm never going to read one of my books. <laughs> um, and so right there are all the reasons that most people fail because they try to write or publish something that they don't have any interest in. So yeah. they don't know who their readers are. They don't know who their customers are. So they don't know where to go find them. Yeah. Like my books would die without my social media marketing. Yeah. And I'm free. So like just finding Facebook niche groups and my Twitter stuff. And um, I just got somebody who's going to start getting Instagram going for me, but th- they would, because they're not your traditional profitable keyword. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Yeah. And, and that's probably why you are successful because you're, and that's one thing I, I keep hearing about you. Do you know, do, uh, and Mecca is a guy that kind of went against the grain of what everybody else was doing on Amazon. Yes. You know, when everybody else was following the herd of Mecca's running over there. Where's he right. going? Let's, you know, now you've got following guys following you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, we got our small little group running the opposite <laughs> because I can see the cliff over there and everyone's running towards it. I'm like, no, no, come with me. Yeah. With me. yeah. Well, let, let's kind of take it from, from where, where you started with that one book, which admittedly yeah. wasn't super duper, but it, it at least yeah. uh, it got you going. Uh, kind of chart the course from then to where you are now in, in as far as the, uh, the number of books that you've got out there, the successes that you've had, some of the, um, you know, I know there have been obstacles along the way. Just kind of take us from point A to point B. Yeah. First book I wrote, um, I wrote, I used a company from over um, – over in Kenya, they were based. And, you know, it was a good book. Information was great. It was exactly what I wanted, but it was written in the non-American English. I guess you would call it English English. Mm-hmm. And so I'm reading and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling like I'm <laughs> sucks. But the information was really good. It was exactly the type of book I wanted, but it was written in the wrong English. Right. That's not going to do well on the Ameri- on dot .com, right? Dot .uk, right? It would do fine. Mm-hmm. you know and I was also in like I did emotional intelligence I think it was I was in a self-help niche super saturated yeah super big saturated. big big niche yes yeah. so the next one I did I, I go with the weight loss book you know because that's you know and how, how did you pick that topic I went through the bestsellers and uh, I went on the bestsellers and uh, you know I saw weight loss, weight loss was selling well of course mm-hmm. billion dollar industry so I thought I could get in there with the newbie and I thought I'd do it and, you know, make my 10 grand. Um, this, this is back when you were following the herd. This is back following the herd. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to make my 10 grand. And uh, so I published a book on weight loss, um, almost got scammed. Somebody tried to, you know, he, he was, but yeah, I, I just, I didn't find a freelancer properly. Right. Yeah. So I almost got scammed, got my money, my money back and, 
and um, you know, but got the book out and you know, it did better than the first one because I'd learned a few things, right? And so it did better, um, but it's it still died off. And then I did another one on, I think this was how to write a book. So I don't know what category that falls in, if it's self-help still or whatever, mm -hmm. but how to write a book. That was my best out of those three. Um, you know, it probably because I took the experience of the first two and mm -hmm. the third, right? So I kept getting, I, I kept getting better even though they weren't really making money yet. Right. But I saw I was moving in the right direction. And that was so key for me, right? Because mm -hmm. at this point, no money's coming in and all the money's going out. Every month, I'm like negative, right? And uh, so that's book three. And then I was like, okay, there has to be something different. You know, and, I, and I'm like Kindle 24-7 at this point, right? All videos on YouTube, Kindle, like learning from everybody I can, trying to figure this out. And then book four comes and... I had the idea for book four and I'm like, wait a minute, what if I just go in this direction instead? And um, it was a webinar I watched and it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I'm like, oh, I have some interest in this anyways. Hmm, wait a minute. I think I could do that. And I uh, found a writer and, um, you know, I got my wife to help me with the cover and it blew up. And I literally went from like, you know, going negative, negative, like, or maybe I profited like 20 or 50 bucks the one month to like 500 the next month. Oh, wow. And then 2000. And, um, and this was all ebook sales. It wasn't even paperback yet because I hadn't published anything on create space yet or on the paperbacks. So everything changed. And I was like, whoa, and published like two or three more books in, right around the exact same topics right away. And uh, just kept going with that, kept going with that. And uh, that was, that was you know, about 12 months ago. And, um, you know, now I have, I have in total about 28 books. Ten of those books are bundled books. Mm -hmm. So 18 actual separate single books. Um, in the main niche that I'm in, I'd probably say about just over half of those are for that one money niche that I was telling you about that I went against grain with. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, now that's turned into a brand. I have a Shopify store for it where I sell my paperbacks um, there. I have a, you know, Facebook page with a great fall. It's great. It's a, it's a decent following, but um, I just got interviewed. I just was this morning. I was filling out a questionnaire from um, um, a site, a website that wanted to interview me because they love my books and they found me through my books. And uh, this is all happening because I've been building a brand around mm -hmm. these books. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? You know, the one thing you have to be careful though, because I used to write in a particular genre under a pen name that was female. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I was, I was actually contacted by someone who wanted to interview that female writer. And I'm like, um, uh, that, you, is it video? You know what I mean? So, so really what, what you're saying here, it's, it's the classic business startup story. You start out a hungry entrepreneur, you look at the market, you, you invest money, you experiment, you lose money, your wife's bitching at you a little bit maybe, but you keep going and then eventually you do identify this niche and you test the waters with this one book the fish start biting, and I don't know why we're doing all these fish references, uh, but they just it just works. Yeah. Uh, and so, once you found that niche that was profitable, you just started creating more products and more products for that niche. And now a year later, uh, I know you just you just had your first ten thousand dollar month, which is huge. Yeah. You know, just huge. But that's let's let's talk about this for a minute because we yeah. kind of touched on this before. Because I know now you're you are doing a lot of teaching and mentoring and uh, you are quickly becoming one of the uh, guys to go to online to learn how to do this but you you told me a few minutes ago when when someone comes to you and says hey can you help me make ten thousand dollars a month you say hey let, let's make a hundred dollars a month let's make a thousand dollars a month yeah. uh, talk a little bit about that because so many of these folks you know, gee, I, I, I want to be rich by Friday, Emeka. Can you help me out? Yeah. You know, so let's yeah. talk a little bit about teaching people to walk before they run. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I could probably figure out the exact moment that I realized. I was like, wait a minute. Everyone's doing this wrong online. 
You know, because everything's like, you know, Lamborghinis, big houses. I know. Yeah. I'm going to put up a picture of my new Kia. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I was like 10000 No one can relate to $10,000 a month. Right. People can relate to making their first thousand. And for me, it was December when I made, I realized the book had made me over $1,000 that month. I was yeah. like, what? You know, I'm like, I figured it out. That was such a confidence boost for me. Mm -hmm. The mental assurance that I could do this, that I knew what I was doing, that the the the, the doubt, the self doubt that I couldn't accomplish something online, or the self doubt at all, I was completely stomped out of me. Like, yeah. I want to give that feeling to people again, and. I, I am not the person who's going to show you how to make 10 grand. I'm the person who's going to show you how to make that first thousand and I'm going to hold your hand while you do it. Yeah. Because I just want to give you the skills and the confidence to make that first thousand. Cause you know, the secret Tim between you and me is once you make the first thousand, you can make 10,000. You just got to do the same thing 10 more times. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. And you know, people, people harp on me for, um, you know, like you, know, you said, I had my first ten thousand dollar month. That was, you know, part with Kindle, part with a course, part with some affiliate sales, a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. People might harp on me because, oh, he doesn't make, you know, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars on Kindle alone. What does he teach? Well, guess what? The people doing that were doing tons of review swaps. They were using loophole after loophole. And where are they now? By the way, all those videos—they're they're gone. Yeah, they're not. They're not around anymore. Yeah. Those people don't make that anymore with, with Kindle publishing mm -hmm. because they don't build a sustain, sustainable business. I'm the guy who builds a sustainable business. My Kindle publishing income has gone anywhere from two to three grand. I think I might have had a 4K month, but it's there. And like I didn't publish books for like three or four months. My income stayed. Mm -hmm. It didn't go anywhere. It might have kept a little, but it was it's consistent and it's safe because – I don't. I haven't had to do review swaps since March, April. Yeah. You know, and I've published multiple books since then. I, you know, I have email lists built. I, I'm doing things the way real authors do things, because those are the people like Steve, Steve or S. J. Scott, Steve Scott, and mm -hmm. Hal Rod, and you know, I'm doing things the way authors have built up their business and their authority, because that's how I want my books to be online in yeah. an authoritative niche that's going to be around. I would say, I want my Kindle business to be paying for my 911 Turbo. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know, you're one of those people, you do what I call common sense coaching. And that simply means if you've got some common sense and realistic expectations, you know, I, I'm going to start a coaching program called Pay Your Power Bill. I'm going to teach you to make enough money to pay that damn utility bill, Emeka, and then we'll go from there. And that's seriously, that's where a lot of a lot of guys they they miss that. They put that that ten thousand dollars has become uh, the brand. That's what everybody wants to shoot yeah. for, right. and uh, you know they don't realize what it takes to make that. There's so much more in it, like to start off with. Mm -hmm. and the people who are going after, oh, I want to make the 10 grand so I can have the Lamborghini and all of that, they're usually the type of people who are looking for shortcuts and loopholes and they want it faster than what's realistic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's just not true. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like, I mentioned that I want a 911 Turbo S. Like, you know, it's going to cost like 250 grand. I want to pick it up from the, the whole German experience and everything. Yeah. I want the fancy stuff. You know, you know what's funny is I saw your video talking about that and I was kind of half paying attention. I thought you had bought that car. Oh, man, that'd be so I'm like, fun. boy, damn, he, he did really good really quickly. <laughs> I, I, I texted Dale Roberts, our mutual yeah. friend, and I'm like, do you see a Mecca's car? He's like, dude. No. Go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. But, you know, I realize that there's so much that has to happen first. Yeah. And, that's the philosophy I've, I've, that's why my, like the tagline on my course is make your first thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. That's what we're focused on. Once you make a thousand, stick with me or go pay somebody to show you how to make 10 grand. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. But I want to help you make that first thousand because that is where most people fail. Most people, they buy courses that promise all this and they, they can't, they don't do anything because right. 
the promise was too big. They get overwhelmed that they're making a hundred bucks, but they're like, oh, I'm not making 10,000. This doesn't work. Yeah. Right? But it's, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think there was, I, I don't remember the number, but Tony Robbins, I think, once said that something like 98% of the people who buy his books never take action. But the two yeah, percent that do do amazing things. So let's. I want to talk a little bit about your your course now. Getting back to the authoring and the Kindle part of this is uh, because you you've proven the concept. You have a formula now that works, and you are sharing it with others. And yes, I'm giving you a plug for your course here. Uh, but talk a little bit about that because you you are one of those young guys, and I'm very familiar with your work, and I endorse your work, that you you have successfully turned the corner from publisher, you know, book producer to mentor and teacher, uh, and you are, are more than willing to share that knowledge. Talk a little bit about your, your course and, and what you uh, do there. So my course teaches people how to make their first $1,000 through mm -hmm. Kindle publishing. And I focus on, yeah, I outsource the books. So I, I show people how to, you know, publish the books, how to get other people to write the books, use ghostwriters, or if there's a writing company that we work with inside uh, the blueprint. But I also do have students who actually love writing and they have their own brands and they write the books themselves or they do half and half to help speed up the process mm -hmm. um, but I show them step by step how to do it the right way and large emphasis on focusing on the long-term strategies that are going to work like building an email list from day one as the most important thing to do because that email list is I believe the key to your to your success because if Amazon disappears or whatever happens, mm -hmm. all you have to do is send an email say, "Hey, my books." Like that's all I did when I started my Shopify store for my books. I just sent an email said, "Hey, by the way, the books are now cheaper over here," and sales on Amazon slowed down and sales for the store went up. Right, and I got paid more. Mm -hmm. Right, like so. It's I really focus on step-by-step step, the, the right way of doing things. Um, you know, I want to clean up the self-publishing world that I think got a little tarnished over the last few years. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Just a little. You think? <laughs> so that, that's kind of what, what, uh, what I focus on. And right now, Tim, it's like you're a fiction writer, right? I am, yeah. Fiction writers... And they have launch strategies of zero review swaps. They can, I was talking to Carla Marie. I'm sure you know her. Yeah. She had 5,000 subscribers on a list, brand new pen name before she even published the book. And I'm like, okay, nonfiction writers, there has to be a way of doing this. And I was, I was in a fiction group and they're like, oh yeah, fiction writers are so much more, or readers are so much more engaged. And they're, they're engaged more than traditional nonfiction, but nobody is you how to engage your nonfiction. That's true. Yeah. And I, I largely is because I don't think anyone cares about the books enough because my writers are extremely engaged. Like I open up my email, email, um, email thing. And uh, <laughs> is that a technical term? Right. That's a technical term. I'll open up my inbox. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'll have like five to 10 emails a day from my readers mm -hmm. um, saying, Oh my God, I, lo I love your books. Uh, you know, what are you coming out with next? You know, yeah. I just, these are, I've had readers send me pictures of my books. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And I'm like, I, and I'm a nonfiction publisher. Don't yeah. tell me nonfiction readers are not engaged. Yeah. Well, you know, it is a, it is a different world because you, you're exactly right. Because on the, the fiction side, you get what you call these whale readers and they are readers who will just absorb everything a writer writes, you know, and that's why the, the, I think the most successful books out there now that are the self-published and not the big name guys are the authors who have a whole series, you yeah. know, and because that what they do is someone will read their first book and go, oh my God, I got to read another one and another one and another one. And that's much easier to do with fiction than it is nonfiction. But then you get someone like a Seth Godin, you know, Seth writes lots of really short books that have just, his readers have just, it's his tribe now. 
And so I think that's the key is not only being able to produce these books, good quality books, but market them, get them to readers and turn those readers into a tribe. Or Steve Scott, right? SJ Steve Scott. Scott, same way, yeah. You know, he's he's somebody who built his reputation on Amazon through self publishing, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and he's pure nonfiction. But why? Why has he been able to hit the number one book overall on Amazon? Because he has people who just buy his books, read right. them, absorb them. Yep. Because he's built that community, and that's what I'm really trying to trying to make more noise about that in the nonfiction. Yeah publishing world because that's what you have to do you can't just throw mud on the wall anymore and see which one's going to stick more and yeah. throw more mud there you have to figure out what's your niche build a brand around it and then find out mm. like i was telling i think one of my students this i don't look at keyword I, my keyword research is this now tim i email my list i run polls on social media say hey out of these books, which ones do you want to see next? And then I publish in that particular order. Yeah. That's my keyword research now for this brand. I don't even care what ranks on Amazon. I care what my readers want because they actually end up making it rank for me. Right. Yeah. And, and that is the smart way to do it. You know, yeah. that is how you, how you create a sustaining career as an author or a publisher is you, you get your readers involved. I know you're, you're on social media a lot. You've got an excellent YouTube channel, almost as good as mine, almost. <laughs> a little better than Dale Roberts, by the way. Um, <laughs> but you, you're, you're very engaging. You go back and forth with your readers. And I think, you know, a lot of people will buy your book just because they like you. And I think that's very important. So, so you're really good at, at building those relationships. Um, in the few minutes that we have left, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, mindset because I know you are very big on goals. You're very big on, you know, visualization and that sort of thing. Uh, talk about the importance, in your opinion, of having the mindset to, to do something like you have done because it's not easy. Yeah, I'd say – the number one thing that I've I, I uh, have been able to fight off, and it's it's th- this is the reason I've been able to have the success I ha- I've had. Actually, there's two reasons. This first one is the one reason most people end up not having the type of success. And I'm talking not success for a year. I'm talking like let's see them actually maintain this type of lifestyle yeah. for like three years. It's a, a it's avoiding the shiny object syndrome, right? So many people they'll get into publishing and then they'll like want to go to FBA or Facebook ads Mm -hmm. or whatever. And, uh, you focus on one and build it the right way. So you can walk away from it and it still maintains its strength. Right. You know, and then that's the right time. That's why I'm not walking away from publishing because if I walk away now, yeah, it'll maintain for a bit, but it's not its not a rock-solid foundation that I want it to be yet. Yeah. Um, second reason, its I, I, I invested in a mentor about, well, back in January. Is that Dewan? Yeah, Dewan. Mm-hmm. And, man, I tell you, I got paid probably $1,300 that month in royalties, and I gave him 1000 right away. So that was like, you know. It was, was, it was like, money well spent too, wasn't it? It, it, oh man! It, yeah, you know, but you can never pay too much for mentors because he expanded my thinking. He forced me to grow faster. He pushed me to my limits, and I've had the success that I've had this year all thanks to him pushing me. And I was thinking it was going to take me twelve months to create my course. I did it in like less than 90 days with him. And um, so having a mentor, man, you should like, honestly, if it means 80% of your income goes towards mentorship, it's the right way to spend spend 80% of your income in my opinion. Yeah. It's just a no brainer. Well, a mentor, a good mentor will, will hold your feet to the fire. Yeah. And, well, and that's the big thing is, is being held accountable because so many people, you know, that shiny object syndrome here in Alabama, uh, we call it sitting on the par- porch chasing every squirrel that goes by right. because you're like, oh, squirrel, squirrel, you know, and so you're not really focusing, but a good mentor uh, like D1 who has mentored a lot of people in this industry uh, can really kind of keep you focused. And I assume you do that for your students. I assume you keep them on track and accountable. 
Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, they, they, whenever somebody posts anything about success or sales or anything in our Facebook group, I always chime in. It's like, so how big's your email list though? Mm -hmm. Right. How mm -hmm. many new subscribers are you getting? Because I don't want them to get caught up in the, in the sales numbers. I want right. them to get caught up in the email list numbers. Yeah. The, the important stuff. Yeah, the active yeah. stuff that actually matters. So what is on the uh, horizon for you? What have you got going on? You got to stick with the publishing, the coaching, what else? Yeah, so definitely um, right now I'm working on um, what's going to be an, another high, higher ticket nonfiction publishing program. Um, okay. So I got some some stuff on the, on the works and that's probably a couple months away still. Um, but right now I just opened up actually my uh, self-publishing accelerator program and this is a, it's a group group mentoring where you get uh, twice a week or twice a month uh, live webinars as well as email access to me and it really focuses on what we were talking about building an authoritative brand on and off Amazon you know using your email list the right way in showing your readers how to become more engaging and just upping the quality of everything else um, across the nonfiction publishing world. Awesome. And uh, you also do modeling for GQ magazine in your off hours. Yeah. A couple of those pictures are good. Mecca sends me this picture and I'm like, damn, that's a good looking <laughs> fella right there. Yeah. I, hey, uh, wow. Hey, uh, if they want to find out more about you and what you've got going on, what's a good place for them to go? Uh, they can hit up my self publishing blueprint.com. Um, my YouTube channel is, uh, is, is by far just the best place. They go there, subscribe, hit the bell. I do daily videos. So daily. Yeah, I, I love the, uh, I call them the sitting on the porch videos. You're just kind of right, sitting yeah, on those, the porch talking. Yeah, no, it's uh, daily videos. I love YouTube, mm -hmm. and I think it's just such a great platform. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I upload yeah. daily. Uh, different times of the year. Right now, I am uploading. Like last month, I, I put up 48 videos. Wow. My, my dogs are barking because they're so impressed with the amount of content. I don't know if you heard them or not. So, yeah. Mecca, we will put links to everything below. Hey, man, this has been a lot of fun. Let's do this again soon. We will. Thanks so much, Tim. All right, man. Take care. <laughs>